Uh, welcome to this morning's uh, fireside chat. Um, it is uh, my honor, my name is Doug Vakoch, I'm with the Study Institute. It's my honor to, uh, to welcome Paul Fromer, uh, who, uh, as all of you know, is the inventor of the Navi language uh, from the movie Avatar. Uh, the uh, language spoken on the planet Pandora. Uh, Paul is a linguist. Um, he, uh, for many years, uh, was a professor at the University of Southern California. He's done field work in Malaysia, Iran. Uh, and uh, in addition to the uh, movie Avatar, uh, he also created another language uh, for uh, 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 the Martian um, movie of John Carter. Uh, so, um, welcome, Paul. Thank you. Uh, so, I wonder, um, could you say something? Sure. Uh, let me let me greet you all in uh, Navi. Kalpe Mayalan, Welangatikame and Wot, Fisk Omri Azau, Fitsaul Ane Akosman, Fte Teri Lefia Hetuong Pivenk O. Uh, so that meant, um, hello everybody. Um, I see you all that see in the avatar sense, see into you, uh, accept you, understand you. Um, and then I said, um, thank you for the opportunity to come to this wonderful conference and um, talk about alien languages. Excellent. One, Excellent. one mispronunciation. <laughs> I, I, I we, we have other Navi speakers in the, yes, in the audience. Yes, yes. Right? The, yeah. uh, <laughs> the new vocabulary item should have been Saulta, meaning. Saulta is the word for India conference. Precisely. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Good. okay. So, so uh, it was. It was it was interesting. Uh, uh, tell me again, uh, um, which part of what you said was I, I see you, I see into you? But? Yeah. So it's well, angati kame. So well is I, uh, with an ending that shows that it's the subject of a transitive verb. So it has an object. Angati is you in the objective form, and the I indicates plural. So it's all of you. Nga is you. Ngati is you in the objective case, and angati is you plural objective. Yeah. And kame ye means see. The root of the word of the verb is kame, K-A-N-E. But there's an infix in there which shows that I feel good about what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So now when, when you said the see, is this, are you talking about visually seeing? No, that's, uh, that's a different word. The okay. word for to see visually is tse'a. But kame, um, and this of course comes from James Cameron. So he capitalizes the S. So it's C in a special sense. I see you is, um, I see into your soul. Yeah, I yeah, accept yeah. you, I understand you. So, so this is a case, you have uh, a, a sentence in one language, you take it into another, but it's not a literal word for word. It's sort of capturing. Yeah, it, it, um, it, it tries to capture the environment, the culture, the reality of uh, life on Pandora and uh, the Navi themselves. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, how did you start out? I mean, did did you invent all of the words from scratch? Yeah. Uh, virtually, yes. I, I didn't start from absolute zero, right. because um, James Cameron, in the original script, had come up with about thirty some odd words of his own. Uh, so I looked at those. They had a vaguely Polynesian feel to them, at least from what I saw. So, and, and what are some of these words? That were? Uh, gee. So, so na Navi? Was uh, Navi itself, yes, yeah. right. Uh, some, of the, um, some of the names of the characters, Etukan, okay. Moat, for example. Uh, so I, 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 I kind of use that as a base, and that influenced some of the sound system of the language. For example, um, in keeping with most of the Polynesian languages, maybe all, uh, there are no voiced stops. So in other words, Navi has b -t -k, but it does not have b -d -g. So that, 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 was, that, was, that was part of what I did. But then I expanded out. So really kind of the first step is to decide what 
sounds will be in the language, what sounds will be excluded from the language, which is just as important. Uh, and then I try to add a little spice to make it interesting, but still plausible and realistic. So uh, Navi includes a series of sounds that linguists call ejectives, uh, which are found in human languages. They're found in uh, Native American languages, they're found in Ethiopia, they're found in Central Asia. There are sounds like um, ah and tu and e. So those are kind of prominent. You probably heard them in, in the, 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 the little thing I said. Um, then in, continuing on with the sound system, you have to decide what combinations of sounds are possible, what combinations of sounds are not possible. What sounds can exist at the beginning of a word, what sounds can exist at the end of the word, which is not necessarily the same thing. Uh, I came up with some pronunciation rules where sounds will change into other sounds under certain conditions. So for example, the word for world is kifke, but in the world is me hifke. So the K is changed to an H. Mm -hmm. And that's part of a very plausible um, a phonological rule that's found in a lot of human languages um, called lenition. So th the basic idea in creating this language was that first of all, it was a very, it, it wasn't a human language that anyone has ever heard. Right. And it was not based on any particular language, which is kind of a misconception that, that people have. I've, I've asked, you know, is it based on Maori? Is it based, no, it's not. It's, it's based on nothing, it's its own entity. Um, but it's a very human-like language, and it could be a human language. So it's, it's, so it's not based on any, any particular language. Um, you said some of, the sound, some of the aspects are reminiscent, so some of the yes. sounds are Polynesian. Are there elements of the grammar that are like or, or, or the way the sentences are constructed that are similar to other languages? Absolutely. So um, although there's the, 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 the grammar, the syntax, the morphology is not based on any one thing, if you look at parts of it, yeah. you will find that this little corner of the language is somewhat reminiscent of something in Hebrew, and this is somewhat reminiscent of something in Chinese, mm -hmm. which is kind of inevitable. If it's going to be a human-like language, there are only a certain number of ways yeah. you can do things. Uh, to give you an example, Hebrew does not have a verb to have in the present tense. To say, I have something, you say yeshli, which means there is to me. I have a book, there is to me a book. So Navi does something very similar. It uses the copula uh, as sort of an existential, and uh, I have a book would be luerupu, which is there is to me a book. Mm -hmm. So I mean, th that's one example. There are other things that look a little bit like Chinese. There are some things which, as far as I know, are unique and don't look like anything, but the combination, the whole system, is unique, and that doesn't exist. So, so you created a language, you started with some sounds, you, you, you um, uh, then have to identify which sounds can go together, what, what are the sequences that are allowable, but now you have to have actors actually speak this. Yes. Did, did, did you ever have to scale back the language, or, or were the actors, did you ever have to say, well, I'd love them to be able to say this word, but they just can't get that plosive, or whatever it is? They were pretty good. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, there were seven um, actors who had major lines yeah. in Navi. And every single one of them tried their best. And, and they, really, they really worked at it. Uh, you know, some were maybe a little better than others. But on the whole, I think the results were, were pretty good. There were times when uh, an actor would have a, a problem with a certain thing. Actually, there, were, there was one funny incident um, where Sam Worthington, who plays, of course, the main character, Jake Sully, um, was undergoing a language lesson. Neytiri was teaching him. You know, she was teaching him uh, to say a certain word. There was a word, nari, which is I, and would be spelled N-A-R-I. And the R is not an American R, it's tap, nari. Okay, he keeps saying nari. Okay. <laughs> and at the end, she kind of gives him a little slap on the face. <laughs> not a very uh, recommended method of, of language pedagogy, <laughs> but... but <laughs> But it worked uh, in that case. It worked in that case. Yeah. But <laughs> it turns out that Sam actually could not tap that R. And so he was very pleased that he actually didn't have to do any acting in that scene. He said, I'll just say it the way I normally say it, and that'll be fine. Uh, there were a few times when I had to kind of change something because things were not coming out right. 
I have to admit there, were, uh, there was at least one incident where I listened to the final dialogue and I said to myself, I don't know what that is. And it was nothing I came up with. But <laughs> I say, well, it's gonna be in the film, so it better be something. And um, turns out that what did come out was perfectly in keeping with the sound system of the language. So I said, okay, so what could it possibly mean? Uh, well, it could mean however. Mm -hmm. And so this actor, without knowing it, has invented the word however. <laughs> so the, the, one of the actors invented one word. Um, what's happened to the language since the movie? Uh, since the movie, uh, for me, it's been perhaps the most astonishing thing of all because there is a community of avid, dedicated, extremely hardworking language learners who really want to learn the language uh, and are using it for genuine communication. I mean, we have movie reviews that are written in Navina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. Stories, poetry, we have had several contests of both prose and poetry. People are producing some wonderful stuff. And the community is helping me and develop the language further. I mean, you know, we don't have a huge vocabulary. Yeah. And uh, we now have a, a, a committee set up with a, with a hierarchy of a rotating chair and so on and so forth, who, uh, who gathers suggestions for new vocabulary and channels it to me. And um, it's my job to say, yes, this is in the language. This needs some modification. We can, this is not, we can do it a different way. Yeah. But um, it's nice to know that there's a whole community now that is actually uh, involved in and invested in expanding the language. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your second artificial language. Yeah, uh, Barsoomi was a very different kind of experience. Uh, for one thing, uh, there, it, it's much less pervasive in John Carter than Navi is in Avatar. Mm -hmm. uh, for Barsoomian, there was already a reasonable body of vocabulary. Uh, of course, the movie John Carter is based largely on the first novel in a series of 11 novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, who's a Tarzan guy. I mean, I had right, no idea right. that he was a science fiction writer, but it turns out that 100 years ago, he has this big Martian series. Uh, and in the series, there's something like, I think I counted 421 words he had come up with. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that really was the basis of the sound system. That gives you a good idea. There was still interpretation, though, involved. Yeah. When he writes ch, what does that mean? Does it mean ch, or does it mean k as in chorus, or does it mean sh as in machine, or does it mean ch as in German Bach? You know, that still has to be determined somewhat arbitrary. But um, one thing he did not have any of, any of is syntax and morphology. Yeah. So that was really pretty much up to me. So I had to kind of take that as a core, and I wanted to respect that, because there's a fan base that considers every word he wrote as sacred text. And I respect that, and that's fine. And I wanted to do something which would expand out from that, but still be consistent with what um, the fans were used to and wanted. So that was very different. Um, for John Carter, I had no direct contact with the actors. Mm -hmm. It was all done sort of uh, through, through proxy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with those two languages, Barsoomian and Navi, um, any, any predictions as to how similar they might be to uh, the language of a real extraterrestrial? Yeah, I suspect that there would not be a lot of similarity. I mean, I mean one thing about uh, alien languages like Navi and Barsoomian and Klingon is that they're really spoken by very humanoid, very human-like aliens. I mean, uh, there, there, there were two major constraints that I was working under in constructing Navi, which was, first of all, that the Navi vocal mechanism, vocal production system was very similar to ours, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which was important because, because uh, Jim Caron didn't want any electronic manipulation in the voices. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that means that, that the sounds will be very human-like, right. and that's true. Um, if you look at the alien language in District 9, I don't think there's much structure there, but that's not a human sounding language at all. <laughs> but I mean, and a, a genuine system of alien communication, who knows if it would, if it would, would even be based on uh, the vocal auditory channel. Maybe uh, they communicate you know, visually by 
as chameleons do, we have very subtle mm -hmm. changes in color. So, you know, it, 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 chances are that the communication system would be strikingly different. Okay, great. Well, uh, I have a lot more questions, but okay. let, me, let me open it up uh, to the audience as well. And uh, Coral has a microphone, so I'll uh, ask you to wait. Uh, is there someone over here? Good morning, this is fascinating. Uh, can you, have there been any science fiction pieces that you've read um, that depict an, the alien language in a manner that is the most interesting, the most provocative, that really um, uh, strikes your, your interest, your curiosity, your, uh, your fancy? Gee, uh, that's a good question. I, I wish I were more of a sci-fi buff. I read a fair amount of science fiction when I was, uh, when I was young and, and, and haven't read a lot. Um, I don't know of any any particular novel that that has a lot of structured language in it, which is simply my, you know my my own my own uh, lack of experience. Uh, Tolkien, I guess, didn't write science fiction, but he wrote fantasy, and of course his languages are genuine languages with a lot of structure, and there are there are devotees and followers of his language. Um, I do remember long time ago reading a very interesting science fiction novel called Cycle of Fire by Hal Clement, uh, which involves uh, a human landing on an alien planet and coming into contact with an alien. And there was very interesting discussion of how they try to communicate with each other and make each other's language known. I don't remember the details, but, but that's pretty much the one that I remember. Yeah, it's called Cycle of Fire. And the author is Hal Clement. It, uh, I read it when I was a kid, which means it's a long time ago. <laughs> but but it, was, it, was a, it was a very good novel. Hi. Speaking of, about to this gentleman's question, I just said there are two science fiction novels I read years ago. Uh -huh. Well, one's famous, A Clockwork Orange. I'm sorry? Uh, a Clockwork Orange by oh, Anthony sure. Burst. Yeah. And apparently, he's invented his own language. I'm not sure this is true. I was told it's based on Russian. Yeah, I, 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 again, it, 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 it's, it's something I don't know as well as I should. I, I, I believe that there's a lot of, it, it's sort of a, a, a Russian English pigeon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but I, that's what I, I can vouch for that, yeah. And the second one I read years ago in college, I forget the author, it was Battle 17, that was hmm. based back in the 70s, and it was based on Fortran, if I remember right. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Well, you know, this is, that's how old it is. But again, there was kind of their own, both, doesn't really deal with aliens in either case, but they, both writers tried to invent their own language. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, th there, are, there are more people than just Mark Ockren and myself and uh, David Peterson who invented the Dothraki language for the, uh, Game of Thrones. There are more people uh, who are inventing languages than, than you might expect. There's a whole language creation society where they're essentially hobbyists who just are taking great delight in inventing languages. And some of them are extremely creative. Um, I heard about a language uh, which is based on touch, exclusively on touch. But it has all the structure of a language which you might expect with, with uh, lexicon and vocabulary and, 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 and syntax and morphology and so on. And it allows um, to you, you and your significant other to be sitting there and holding hands <laughs> and communicating <laughs> with each other without any anyone knowing what's going on. So I mean, I mean, there's some very inventive stuff going on. Yeah. Other questions? So as an inventor of a language and as a linguist, probably someone who studied the evolution of language. Um, is there anything that you've done in the invention of language that informs the evolution of language or back and forth? Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean what, what, what I've done is sort of create a language that exists pretty much at one point in time. However, in coming up with new lexical items, uh, you have to kind of take into account how these things might have evolved in the language. Uh, essentially, to come up with new vocabulary, you need to consider three different elements, uh, three different ways of doing it. 
One, uh, so, so for example, I, I came up with the word for conference last night. Okay. I've been saying that a long time. <laughs> so um, I could have done it in three ways. I could have said, okay, this is going to be a borrowed term. So it could have been conference, which would fit into conference. That doesn't sound like a very interesting way to do it. It could have been a totally different new word, new root. Or what I chose to do is take existing things in the language and put them together. So the word for conference is um, saluta. Sal means big, impressive, ulta means meeting. So a conference is a, is a big meeting. Now in doing that kind of stuff, you have to kind of put yourself back in time and see how did this possibly come about and what kinds of changes might have taken place over the centuries in the development of the language to come up with the present form. And uh, some of these changes are, uh, most probably are phonological changes, where, where sounds have changed because of the influence of other sounds. So um, a recent word um, that we came up with is kesembute. Kesembute means a course or it goes without saying. And rather than simply coming up with a compound like that, you have to think, what might have been the etymology of this thing? Well, the etymology was ke zene, it means not necessary, pivot e, to say, not necessary. To, but probably ke zene pivot e, for a phrase that was very common, would eventually contract, which we do in language all the time. It's a very natural kind of thing. And so um, there, were, there were assimilations and changes that eventually gave you ke pivot e. Uh, so the law, it's a very roundabout way of answering your question, too. Uh, in thinking about the evolution of language, that's something that I, I have to think about. Uh, I haven't thought as much about the evolution of syntax, for example. But that's something that, that we, we could consider. For the sequels, it's possible, I don't know, that we will be dealing with new dialects of not, because if there are new tribes on different parts of, of Pandora, it's possible that they speak the language in a, in a somewhat different way. And to do that, then you have to kind of think, well, where could these existing dialects have come from originally? Kind of reconstruct a proto-language, and that would involve thinking of the evolution of language as well. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, let me ask, uh, how, how does um, a professor of clinical management communication yeah. at, at the University of Southern California go on to create an alien language? Yeah, um, professor has to be very lucky <laughs> to... <laughs> I mean, I, I consider myself one of the most fortunate people in the world. Uh, I have a degree in linguistics, and I wound up in a business school teaching management communication. I had some business experience. Uh, linguistics sounds like communication, put it together, sounds like business communication. And so uh, I was very happy doing that at USC uh, for many years. And then I received an email that was forwarded to me by a, a buddy of mine in the linguistics department, uh, which came from Jim Cameron's production company. And they were seeking a linguist to invent a language for a science fiction film didn't even know the name Avatar, it was called Project 880. And so Ed it to me and said, you know, I think you might be interested. And I said, yeah. So I, I jumped on it. I essentially applied for the job. And I wrote to Jim Cameron and I sent him a copy of, of, of my book and it expressed a lot of enthusiasm. We had a meeting and it worked out. And my life has not been the same ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you say you sent him a copy of the book. Was, was that just evidence of your work as a linguist or was there a connection well, well I actually, there, there was, uh, the, the book is called Looking at Languages. It's a workbook in elementary linguistics. Um, my co-author is a linguist at USC um, named Ed Finnegan. And um, I actually had come up with a little bit of the beginning of an alien language as an exercise for students to, um, to work out. The language was called Speak to Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, I, I kind of pointed out to Jim Cameron, see, I have a little bit of, of, of experience. <laughs> Very good. Uh, is there a final question? 
If not, let us thank uh, uh, Dr. Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you.